Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show. <laughs> the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us as we chat about current topics in the quilting world, techniques to improve your own projects, and fun stories about our quilts. Our episodes come out twice a month, complemented by virtual sew-ins and podcasts. You can learn more about us at thestitchtvshow.com. Today, we are very excited to announce our new sponsor, Ink and Arrow Fabrics. A Yay! Di a division of QT Fabrics. So, fun story about Ink and Arrow. Okay. We stopped by their booth at QuiltCon. And took a picture. Took a picture. They were the ones, they were the booth that had the no matter what gnome, G-N-O-M-E. So when you're spelling right. stuff, G is a gnome. You know, right? Uh, and I thought, you know, my parents are on Instagram solely to like my stuff and our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom likes everything I oh, put out. She does. Like she's like my mom's on and it. And for a while, I was like, I don't know who this person. Is. And then I was like, oh, oh yeah, no, I know. Mom. Yeah. So my dad does too. Yes. My dad kind of has a thing with gnomes, and I'm like, I don't know if he's gonna like this because it's got gnomes on it. He didn't like gnomes. He, gnomes he, are scary. He feels about gnomes the way he's I got feel something about against birds. travelocity. What? No. no. The thing with gnomes is, like birds, like they're okay, they stay in their lane, but you know what they're going to do. They're kind of shifty. They may not blink, like birds. You know, I really liked that movie, Gnomeo and Juliet. Yeah, it yeah. was awesome. It was a great movie. Yeah. So my dad has this thing with gnomes where he's like not down with them. And so in addition to like Will Ferrell movies, a whole nother side topic. Anyway, <laughs> so we posted that picture. I'm like, I don't know if my dad's going to like this picture. Because it's got gnomes in it. And yeah. he did. So there you go. That's how cute their fabric is. That even, oh, I love Even my fabric. crusty old dad, who doesn't like gnomes. So exciting. Super cute. So yes, the Paloma line. The Paloma line out. is just, uh, like I've drooled over it. Yeah. They sent us a box. And I Because we're doing a pattern. <laughs> yes. So anyway, this thank is you. This super cute too. Did you see this with the dancing, with the cha-cha? Yeah, I got fish. Oh, man. Fish. So that may have to stay with me. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> That's not a part of the line. We have it's to not argue. Part of Paloma. We're gonna argue over fabric. No, we're not. Anyway, so what's up? <laughs> no, but what are we gonna talk about first before we talk about what's up? Oh, sorry. We're gonna talk today about how to square up your quilts and submitting patterns for publication. Uh, we're joined by Pan Sample of a new pattern that's gonna be out in the Make Modern Australia Modern quilt magazine on may in may yes may and 2017. 2017 and this is called no regrets so i'm very excited about it me too mostly because it's done <laughs> <laughs> the best d, part of any project d for it. done d for done <laughs> so what's been up with you i have been so super busy the last week it's been we crazy. Bless your heart. It's more than a week. Honey. I know. It has been. <laughs> I was just trying to define it down. Mm. It's been the last, yeah, a long time. So, but we're getting to, everybody knows, if you watch us, that I'm in charge <laughs> of the big quilt show here in Georgia. Please come June 8th through 10th at the East Cobb Quilt Show. Quilters Guild. Quilters Georgia Guild. celebrates quilts. Show. Quilt show and market, technically. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so a part of the whole process is, you know, you send out a call for quilts and then you pray people will send you pictures of quilts that will be in your show. And that happened. <laughs> and not a picture of a pile of fabric that says, this is going to be an awesome quilt. Yeah. Please like, accept it. I'll to make your show. something out of this at some point. It's a whole cloth. There's one piece of fabric. <laughs> That was, yeah. So I did actually a whole cloth quilt and she told me I couldn't take a picture of the piece of fabric. She goes, you have to quilt it. <laughs> Anyway, um, so when people send you the pictures for after the call for quilts, one of the things is you have to jury who gets to be in the show and what quilts we can hang. And man, that's a stressful day and a hard process. Now, the chairman of the jury committee was awesome and it happened and we did a great job and we're going to have amazing, amazing quilts in the show. Um, so very excited about that. But, you know, it's hard to look at 400 and yeah. uh, it was close to four over 400 quilts. I want to say it was close to 440 quilts and narrow that down to 330 quilts. So we had to take away 100 quilts. And that's just a tough decision. Yeah. But you look at the categories and does this fit in this category or does this quilt you know, and you want a variety of quilt styles and variety of quilt techniques. And 
it's just, it's a, it's a big process. So that was one day. And then the other day, after you do that, the next step is to actually lay out the show. And laying out the show is just a really, there's different ways that you can do it. Like some shows are laid out by what looks good together, Mm -hmm. you know, and some shows are laid out by category. But you always want to put quilts hanging next to each other that are not going to clash with each other, (laughs) you know. So, and then there's the whole game of um, how big are these quilts and can we put three on one panel Mm-hmm. You know, what you're going to look at or, you know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, is this one hanging next to this one? And you do you want the same quilters, quilts hanging next to each other or not? Or, I mean, there's just, it was like a big puzzle. So it was interesting. Interesting process. We should probably do a topic more just on how to do it. You know, because there's a lot of people out there that want to yeah. know how to put a quilt show together. And there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle of doing it. So... Anyway, that's what I've been doing, staring at quilts <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> a lot of quilts. A lot of quilts. I think this one might be in the show. I can't remember. I can't remember what I submitted It was this submitted, oh. but I cannot reveal. So you may know. I may have in information. May, in May, it will be public knowledge. Yes. You should get an email on whether this was accepted or not. And I am not time. that person. <laughs> I know the person sending no that watch email. Today. <laughs> Mickey says. Anyway, so yes, I can't tell anybody. What I know what. It's super secret. I know. I'm not, and I'm not even telling my business partner. So there you go. I'm not even telling Pam. That's how super secret it is. So anyway, what are, what is our topic today? We're talking about squaring up quilts. Speaking of, because that may be an important part of submitting to a show. It is an important part. Of submitting <laughs> or to a it's show. not because you don't care. <laughs> No, it is an important part of submitting to a show. So it's squaring up your quilt. Before you put the binding on, you have to square up your quilts. Do you? Okay, well, there's Maybe different I, techniques. Yeah, okay, so. So, go ahead. When do you need to square up a quilt versus when don't you need to square up a quilt? Okay, so, here's why I asked. <laughs> I have a big I get to talk. Okay. So. <laughs> Maybe you don't make a quilt with corners. <laughs> Maybe you make a round quilt. Maybe you make a weird, lumpy-looking quilt. Maybe it's lumpy. art. <laughs> or legit art. So you may not need to square up a quilt. True. For example, the ones that I make that end up in a fort, it don't, I, I could start them off square. It ain't going to matter. Dog's going to sit on it. Cat's going to yank on it. Someone's going to throw up on it at some point. Yeah, no. <laughs> Especially if there's children involved. Yes. Just saying. So, like, for general use lap quilts or even bed quilts, like, I don't square those up. I've only ever squared up a quilt when I've entered it in a show. True. And and let's, oh, okay. Well, let's, let's define squared yeah, up quilts. Yeah, let's define squared up quilts because I think I always square up every quilt. I just when may not it? go through blocking. the blocking. Oh, blocking. That's the I key. think I was talking about blocking. Yeah, you don't block a quilt for every quilt you do. I blocked up. And I don't either. Two quilts in my life. Here's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and here's one. <laughs> And maybe that's what people need to understand. I mean, uh, what is blocking a quilt? Do you know what blocking a quilt is? Apparently, well, do. That's you've not done a topic twice. today. We're talking about squaring. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We'll do both. Psych. So, Extra bonus topic. I suppose. Blocking. Squaring up a quilt to me says, okay, I get it all quilted and I'm ready to trim it. And I trim it in a straight line. Even if through my quilting and like, oh, let me smooth this part out to quilt this area. Inevitably, it's like, it's not straight across. It's yeah. like, bloop, 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 bloop. Yeah. And then you kind of curse yourself that you put a complicated border on the <clears> edge. <throat> that now you're just like whacking off part of it. Whacking off. Yep. That's true. So that could technically be called squaring it up. In which case, yes, I do that every time I trim it. Because I used to just use scissors and like cut right along the edge. And then I thought, boy, I hate cutting with scissors. <laughs> which will be a topic on the next show because I'm left-handed. Anyway. <laughs> Well, so I I square mine with a rotary cutter and a ruler. Yes, I square mine with a rotary cutter and a ruler, and I get the biggest square that I have. And this actually is oh, I got a twenty inch. I have a twenty inch too. It's too big though. I it's like poke too myself big to in have stomach. on the show because it would be like the whole be like all of us. Um, <laughs> but I think you get the biggest square ruler because when you do trim yes. the quilt, you want this corner sharp. Yes. If it's a corner, you don't quilt. want it to be like that or like, like that. that. Yeah. 
So and, I use a ruler yeah. to do, like, I'll go up the side and I leave my ruler in place yes. and then square. And I do that with blocks. That's not just. Oh, I don't square those up. I just press them and tug a little no, bit. No, 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 no. You should, you you should square up and tug. your blocks. <laughs> and you shouldn't move your ruler to, you know. Right, you should. You square up this edge and then you turn the block and then you square up the edge with your block measuring where it's supposed to be. That's probably why I sew faster than Lynn. Because <laughs> I'm like, that's going to quilt out. <laughs> that's going to quilt out. <laughs> you wouldn't have that's going to quilt out problems if you squared up your blocks. Just say it. Yeah, but then you lose a bunch of points. Oh, points. True. All right. Anyway. <laughs> so, but blocking a quilt, you happen before you trim. If you're doing it for a show, you do blocking before you trim. Oops. <laughs> I was a night after. <laughs> Much like if you are a knitter or a crocheter and you are blocking a sweater or a piece. That's true. You need to finish the whole thing before you block it. Okay. I well, was channeling according that. That to, is my defense. According to Karen McTavish in Quilting for a Show Book, which is a really good resource if you're interested in entering in shows, especially national shows. She's got res She's got references in here of some of the top quilters in the country and in our industry. And she is also. Um, so she goes through exactly how to um, block the quilt and put on the sleeve and all that kind of stuff. But one of the tips that she gives in the book is you want to go to Home Depot or some... Big box big home improvement store. Home improvement who store. Who was not a sponsor of the show. Thank you, Inconero. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and you want to get the big, thick insulation. They're pink. Um mine's sheets. Purple. Oh, wow. I thought perhaps mine is slightly more toxic. <laughs> I don't know. And there yeah, I have about heard two inch thick. They're about two, two and a half inch thick, yeah. And I've heard people say that they could be toxic. I'm like, they're in your house. I would not saying. expose a whole bunch of employees at Home Depot to them if it was gonna give everybody cancer spontaneously. Right. Not on purpose. Anyway. <laughs> So, but what you do is you get your quilt wet. <clears throat> you get your quilt wet, which yeah. I think, I know, fits fear in some people. And you stretch it out on, and you usually have to do this with a partner, but you stretch it out on the, you put the insulation, the insulation on, on the floor and you stretch flat. out your quilt. Don't tilt it. Don't yeah, have it it's upright. Flat. Wet your quilt, and then you take measurements of how wide your quilt or and how long your quilt is supposed to be, and you start marking that on the insulation, and then you're penning every, I mean, I think they pin every inch, if not every half mm -hmm. inch. Rust-proof pins. Yes. Rust-proof. And you're penning it to where you want that stretched to exactly the, the dimensions of the length and the width. So at this point, it's before and binding. You let it dry, and you it's yeah before binding. Before but binding, after trimming, like no, you've trimmed it. I don't think so. Then how can you mark? Because you can't see. You got your extra backing fabric in the way. Are you just like peeking and lining it up and pinning? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, you have a tape One measure. Word. You have, have a tape not. measure on top. To make okay. sure, and you're moving it down. That's why you have to do it with somebody else. It helps. And so, once you have that all pinned down, all four sides of your quilt, you let it dry. It's just like the quilter's equivalent of having a buddy help you move. Yeah, essentially. Like, I'll, I'll bring you a case I'll come of, and I'll block get you a case of beer you. if you help me block my quilt. <laughs> well, this quilt's not hard to block simply no. because it's not that big. But if you're talking about a good, you know, queen yeah. size quilt. The other one I did was big. show quilt, and I think it was 65 inches square. And then you let it dry. Uh, no, I, I have put a fan on mine to help. I think people do that. It yeah. also helped keep the cats off. Because <laughs> a big, fun quilt laid out on my dining room table, super attractive to cats. But the fan on it, they kind of went, Ugh, you know. Yeah. I'm sure that's going to be a screen cap in the promo image. And then <laughs> after you do that, after it's dry, it should be the right should be. It shouldn't should like shrink be. up and pull no. all your pins in. No, it shouldn't. That's why you have to put so many pins yeah. so that it doesn't. You're and that because if you do fewer pins than that, then you get like weird scallopy yeah. stuff too. So you've got to put a ton of pins. It's a ton of pins. And then you trim it. And then put your binding on. And your favorite binding method. 
Suitable Although, for a show. Suitable for a show, which means hand. you're probably machine <laughs> applying it to the first, turning to the front, turning it to the back, and hand applying it. Yeah. And a quick tip for those corners on your hand applied binding: take some stitches on both sides of those corners mm-hmm. to to it, nail it down, because right judges will look at that. I should probably go put a little stitch. Yeah, in there. she doesn't have any stitches. Judges will notice, just so you know. But honestly, <laughs> this is one of the best books on how to prep for a show. And it it's goes into really good. squaring up and blocking. And it goes into squaring up and blocking. And she has great pictures in here of exactly how to do it, too. As well as some pictures of some fantastic show quilts that if you've never seen live and in person, um, they are owned by the museum, the quilt museum. Mm-hmm. And I thought okay. I had it marked. So the reason that we make big gaspy faces when we talked about wetting a quilt is most people don't. Yeah, most people don't because so they're afraid fabrics will run. Because particularly down. for wall hangings, She's that I have no down. intention of ever washing it, barring um, some unforeseen kitchen disaster. Well, you got to make sure you're. Let us refer you to episode one hundred and one, in which we talked about getting <laughs> stains out of quilts. Well, you got to make sure all the markings out of your quilts. Yeah. Before you wet it, that need to have, I mean, it depends on what you use to mark your quilts with. Some are heat, take away, some are, some water. are water, take away. So. so when you wet it, are you using a washing machine or using a spray bottle? Are you just dunking it in a sink? What do you usually use? I'm, because um, you want it, yeah, you don't want it soaking, dripping wet, so I don't like to dunk it, but I'm, yeah, using a... A spray bottle, probably more so. Just water, not water and starch, not water. Just water. Just water. Just water. That's what I use. I don't. Th- I don't think she uses anything but water. Yeah. I wet. So it. my default spray bottle has the starch mixed in because I use it for pressing. That's why oh, I ask because okay. I wouldn't want to just wee because then that can maybe cause some flaking if it dries yeah. weird. Or... Yeah. Yeah. But you use what potato vodka for starch? No, I drink all that. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> this big bottle. And my it other was a tip. tough first quarter, Lynn. I drank it. <laughs> I Sue know, me. You have. We, it's been a crazy tough first quarter for both of us. Um, so, but, and my other tip was scaring up the corners with the biggest ruler you've got. Yes. And then, if you've got a big cutting table, you want to take advantage of a big cutting table. Or I know quilt stores that'll let you bring a quilt oh, yeah. and trim. Yeah, especially the if they've store, got like a big classroom space. If they have a big classroom space and a big cutting table, because big cutting table, man. Oh, that's a nine. That's nice. <laughs> once you <laughs> once you get a big cutting table, you don't go back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no going back. Mine's like sixty. Yours is bigger than mine. Yeah. Too far for me to reach comfortably. Yeah. Like, because the cat will, we've got, it butts up, mine butts up against a window, and I specifically made a little quilted mat that says, cat goes here, <laughs> hoping maybe one day my cats would learn to read. No. They haven't yet, happen. but they do like the window right there, and so <laughs> if Jet is laying back at that window, I have to like, <gasps> scratch his belly. Yeah. It's very attractive. <clears throat> so, but those are my tips on how to um, square up your quilts and block your quilt. But... Now, do I block every quilt that I do? Absolutely not. No. no. Yeah. Again, mine are just every other year when there's a show. When there's a show. Or there's a... I may block oh, a quilt. Some more, a lot of people are going to see this. Yeah. It's going in a magazine. It's getting published or whatever. You may have yeah. to block it. Yeah. So, but if not, no. I mean, but this is definitely for show quilts. Okay. One, That's a great book, too, by the way. No, I have seen... Karen McTavish, who wrote it. Um, when it comes to trimming some people will sew on an extra bit to make sure that when it is on the border because like for this one it's got just you know that blank space all the way around it so I could trim it relatively with impunity right but if you've got a fancy pieced border have you ever pieced like an extra two inches on the edge of that just to make sure I haven't pieced extra on the two inches but I have taken classes from some national quilters that are very conscientious about where they start their quilting pattern is a quarter of an inch away from Mm -hmm. that true edge so that you're not cutting off part of the quilting pattern. Yeah. Um, Which doesn't make sense for, like... Pantones and or you know, pantos, pantos, pantos. <laughs> right? Sorry, <laughs> different pantographs. Um, 
you know, if you're doing a pantograph, that goes off the edge. But if it's custom quilting right. and it's got a certain plat pattern to the to the background or the block, they are very conscious yeah. about that quarter of an inch on the edge before their design starts so that... Yeah, cutting off an all-over swirl, not a big deal. But if you're doing a ribbon candy and you're slicing off the bottom edge, I have... I have gone in with the same marking pen and just like, here's the quarter inch. So I know, like, don't go beyond here. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. That yeah. was my last question about it. So. All righty. So. That's all I know <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a closer look at uh, the No Regress quilt and we will be right back. Hi, welcome back. Um, we, we are going to talk about what's happening. Spitty, the tech per, uh, people are like giving me a hard time. Anyway, we are going to talk about submitting patterns for publication. <laughs> Huzzah! Huzzah! Because we have Which, done it once. We are experts. Twice. Three, three times a lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, yeah, three. 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 One. Three. We got another one coming this, out. And then the other one is September. August, September. Right. And then another one that you just worked on. Yeah. It's not a magazine, but it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> we are experts. Yay. Us three times. <laughs> experts. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Anyway, but we're going to talk about how to do it. Or how we did it. How we did we it. And it actually seemed to work. just begged people. And well, they and said, like, okay. And it's like the weird thing. Like you hear stories and like, oh, I submitted. I got turned down. I'm like, we didn't get turned down. <laughs> we must be awesome. <laughs> but we're so awesome. That's it. So awesome. That's it. Anyway. So, and yeah. they watch our show. <laughs> and go, we just feel so sorry for them. We should just <laughs> let them do that. So anyway. So here's what you need to know. Here's what you need to know. So, Number one, timelines. Oh, yes. Timelines. Expectation yes. management is an important exactly. part of life. <laughs> Don't be like, you here's an awesome pattern. Publish it next week. It's not how it happens. Not exactly. Oh, no. We started work on this this one like months ago. Well, so actually, like, probably six the months ago. original design for this is a swap that I did years ago. And then I just sat on it like, I should write that up as a pattern. And then finally, when we started doing this, I'm like, I think I got a thing. And all I really had was the center applique, but nothing we else. We say that a lot, just FYI. I, I think I got a thing, okay? I had an idea. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes they're not stupid. Sometimes they are. <laughs> anyway. And Lynn won't let me do it. <laughs> That's true. So for this one. I get to veto. We s submitted the idea last year. Yes. Gosh. It was August? No, September. September. Yeah, September. Like September. I, you know, had the sketch. So what I, I had the applique pattern already from previous years. And I agonized over it in EQ7 because that's how I designed mine. Right. Although I've done graph paper or a combination. She sends me pictures of graph paper. Look at this. Well, because I was drawing on a beach. There was no Wi-Fi in the ocean. <laughs> True. Those squids just use telepathy, man. They don't need no Wi-Fi. They got squid talk. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, so I had designed this in EQ7, so I had, and actually had to Photoshop it because I didn't have the applique in EQ7. I had the layout part and with like a big gray square. <laughs> so then it was like, oh, the Photoshop. Photoshop is awesome. So I here is a picture of my final. Now I haven't made it. Didn't have fabric picked out. Had an idea like color wise, and I right. used all solids to represent it because I knew focus on solids going to be more modern. And so I said, here is my picture. Here is a description of the techniques. Please love it. <laughs> please, please don't love reject it. us. <laughs> please, <laughs> please love it. Uh, and they wrote back and said, Yay, we like it. Here's when we're thinking we could publish it. And I was like, oh, that's so far away. I've got plenty of time. <laughs> so submitted in nope. September. It was due. You got it all done. I didn't do jack on yeah, this one. It was due just, in like, early March. Right. For a May publication. Right. So here I'm thinking all smug, like, ooh, I got October, November, December, January, February. And then the first of the year rolls around. And, well, no, I worked on it over Christmas break. So I got the... <clears throat> top piece 
because that part's kind of easy. I'm like, eh, it's just a math, some half square triangles, square to square, no big deal. And then I was like, and I quilt it. <laughs> It'll kill me if I do it all over. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. So I told, I said, you know, this is going in a magazine. Yep. And our name's on it. Not that I'm doing anything. Our name's on it. The stitch name's on it. Yeah. It's got to be. Bright. But I'm like, thank goodness it's small. <laughs> so so it was more to me agonizing over the quilting of, I don't want to jack it up. I want it to showcase the piecing. So that took me longer yeah. than it normally would because I couldn't I just be like, Bloop. Hard. Yeah. So, and then I couldn't machine bind it. I mean, I could have, but. No. I guess I'll hand do it. No. <laughs> hand binding. Also knowing, oh, I'll submit it to the show. <laughs> the quick right. show. So, so hand binding. So overall, that timeline was eight months. Yeah, it's a long process. So don't think that you're just going to submit to a magazine and it'll be published next month. It'll be. Depends on the magazine. Some of that, like when there are Well, and if they come, yeah. o- come out quarterly. Yeah. You know, you're going to submit to a magazine. You may not be till next summer. Yeah. You know. Because they've got stuff lined up, which is hard. I mean, it's hard when you think about from the standpoint, especially with new lines coming out and the timing mm-hmm. of when fabric comes out. And there's this whole dance of yeah. getting the newest lines and your patterns. And and the production cycle for fabric where well, the line comes out in July. The fabric will be available then. I'll have to sew everything in a week. No, no. they Fabric manufacturing companies get samples well ahead of time. This line's well, not out yet, but they have samples from production. Right. So. Yeah. So. So that was one particular Although I've experience. heard sometimes you have to sew them in a week. I have heard that, especially for market. There's yes. like a rapid turnaround. A rapid turnaround. And now, the other magazine pattern that we've got coming out was a much quicker turnaround. <laughs> Where I'm like, I'm just fiddling with the design. Like, I think this is cool submit this to a magazine and they've and it said oh we'll get back to you in you know six to eight weeks and right. I'm like Psh, no trouble first quarter is already crazy I totally hope they get back to me in May <laughs> oh no within the week this is lovely we would love to publish this pattern and we need everything by second week in April what <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was a little alarming so that was a submit in February right <clears throat> and then me looking at, oh, I am out for a week in March for work. I am out for a week in April for family vacation. You were and stressed. It for was a bit. due to be mailed the week after we got back from our vacation, but it was like uh, the piecing I wasn't worried about. It was a the two quilt block quilt, and they were simple blocks. But it was like, oh, I don't know. I, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she I don't panicked. Know. I did it to myself. <laughs> So she's like, I told her, I said, well, if you piece it, I'll quilt it. So Yay. I quilted it. So yeah, I got the piecing done and then got it to her for the week that I was in Vegas. Yes. And then got it back and was like, all right, now I have to bind everything and finalize the pa- pattern good. instructions. and all. Yeah, It's a great cool. quilt. I we can't it. wait till you see it. We'll show yeah. it to you when you, yeah. we get it back. So, but, oh, that brings up something else. But still not going to be published until fall. Right. Early fall. Yeah. So that brings up something else. I think when you're submitting to a magazine, you need to look at the magazine and say, does my pattern fit this style? Mm -hmm. Because there, I mean, if you're making modern quilt patterns, you're going to submit to a modern quilt magazine compared to doing a more traditional look is not going to fit with a modern quilt. Like I, I just designed a pattern for a company and um, it's very traditional, and it, there's no way I would submit it to the yeah. modern. Or even considering you're not <clears> going <throat> to go with super crazy, intricate piecing to a magazine that focuses on quick and easy quilts. Right, yeah. exactly. That's not going to work. <laughs> exactly. Well, if you just blow the blocks up so they're four times the size and you only have to make four blocks, then yes, <laughs> but not But yeah, 60 pieces in a six-inch block. That's not happening. <laughs> So you have to know Which I've done. <laughs> 60 yes, pieces. That's like... That's nothing. That's nothing. That's so beginner. <laughs> so with both of my experiences with magazines and the experience you had with the fabric company, right. we submitted, here is a, a picture of... A, this is what it's going to look like. Right. Now, both, both of ours were in EQ7. All of ours were. Yes. Yes. So yes. that's how we did it. But again, you can get you can do graph paper or drawing paper. You know. I don't always design an EQ7, but... I, there's some things that doesn't work great I know. There's I some things one. I get ir- yeah. irritated <laughs> with on it. But, yeah, I do a lot of design. At least concepts. Mm-hmm. 
playing with because it's easier to turn the blocks. Yeah, and yeah. Then make it, to erase it. Yeah, <laughs> all that kind of stuff and change colors. What if I made this green or what if I made this purple or, you know, get definition that way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely do that. So timelines is important. Styles is important. And the other one I wrote down is rights. What are your rights? Do you, or do you have the right to publish this as your own pattern eventually? Yep. So d- it depends. Each magazine or Has publication different house rules. is different. Right. So typically with fabric companies, they are paying you for the pattern and thus ends your rights. Sometimes. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes. Depends. On the case, what your deal is with them. Yeah. In the case. And if that's important to you. I yeah. mean, you design the pattern. If you're doing you, it because you need money. Cool. Right. Cool. If yeah. you're doing it for Because you want it back. Yeah, you're probably going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> you need to change businesses at that point. <laughs> Fame and notoriety. <laughs> like, seriously. We're all over the YouTube, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get recognized everywhere. <laughs> No, 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 not even. No. So some magazines, you get the rights back as soon as the next issue publishes. And then you right. can then publish that and sell that as your own pattern. Some, it is a much longer contract um, or uh, rights re- retention. I don't know what the right word is there. I think that's, yeah, retention. So they get it. rights to it for six months, a year, you know. Right. And then they may even reprint the pattern, but they will pay you extra for the right to do that. So oh, then if you right. want to self-publish the pattern, it's like, well, you may be competing with them. So then it's on and you. And you don't want to compete with yourself. So, yeah. But it's just something I think you need to take into consideration and think about. Like, what are you trying to do? Yeah. So the reason that we started submitting to magazines, honestly. Because we want people to love us. Well, they want, And know who we them. are. <laughs> well, they want hey, look at this cool show. Let me put that on they the should, sewing ring. We should write, we should watch this ditch. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we started. Not because I had this strong desire to see my name in print. Like, eh. I can do that. I can print out paper all day, <laughs> see my name in print. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Nice. Nice. I can put stuff on the YouTubes. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so those are, but that's what I was thinking when we're talking about publishing. Timelines is very important, especially when you're dealing with, and meet the timelines. Meet. Oh, yeah. If they give you a deadline, you make that deadline. That's a big yeah. deal. And I want to, honestly, I want to beat the deadline. I want them to. I want to buffer. I want to buffer in case there's something wrong. Turn case papers they, in two weeks early in high school. Of course, I didn't do that. Now, I'm a, now you and I design differently. Like, she will design. To the and, nth degree. Right. I will know how much scrap fabric I will have left at the end of it because I, it's like, here's my yeah, I don't. seven, And then I get a piece of graph paper and I'm like, and here's how everything's getting cut. Because I want to provide But I order. like, well, even when we design patterns for the stitch, I like the time pressure. I do. I design better and I, if I have a timeline and that pressure and to get stuff done, that drives you nuts. Mm-hmm. And I like it. It makes me better, I think. Just saying. So, I just think there are two, no, there are two types of people. And, okay, so in high school or college or whatever, you are the one who got the term paper due way before, and Mm -hmm. then I'm the one who wrote it the night before. Mm -hmm. Because I think there are those types of people that write it the night before. I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. No, you're not alone. (laughs) And we can still get a good grade. (laughs) Show of hands in the room. I win. <laughs> no, that was for me. I know. No, but I win. Because I wasn't doing it the night before. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, was sitting around drinking all my leftover vodka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyway, anything else on publishing? It's fun to see your stuff in print. It is. Oh, another thing to consider. You will need a nice picture of yourself and not a selfie. <laughs> that was perhaps the most stressful thing. Now, fortunately, we had that taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true but they will add, and, and that is like and you they have won't. I don't think you've had to do it with what you're doing but like well we need your bio and sometimes oh, it's I 300 bio words and sometimes all the time yeah. they want when you're speaking at guilds they want a picture of right. you in your bio because they'll send it out in their newsletters yeah but sometimes so, it has to be super short and fun and not like I know stuff about quilts you know what Trust my bio me. is every time 
It's what's on the stitch TV show.com. I copy and paste that thing and I put it in email and I send it out. Oh, I mix mine up. No, nope. depends Mine's on the magazine. The same thing. <laughs> I got a different one for this one versus the other one. Do you really? I had a little I gotta get her to write my bio because I don't write well. It's not my forte. Well, I don't think I'm funny. I am funny. You may but have not. regrets, but none about quilting. That's what I added to my bio for this one. <laughs> but not about quilting. <laughs> no regret. Well, we can't say that. It's no regrets. There may be regrets, but no regrets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Oh, another thing to consider, particularly yes. for magazines, depends on how established they are. Sometimes they want you to take the finished photos of the project. Sometimes oh. you ship them the project. Oh, that's right. You, We took finished photos of this. You did. We. Yes, I did. That was it the, was the most the, stressful you, thing I have ever done. <laughs> and there are several takes of just my cat's tail in the middle of it because she decided to help. <laughs> she was helping. Yeah. And, but I had to stage it differently. I'm like, I need the straight shot, and then I need, like, the lifestyle shot. And then I'm like, oh, it's a modern. They don't think they want that in there. But so, yeah, I was very stressed over that. To go outdoors, wind. Full Beyonce. Make your own wind. <laughs> I, just had, I went to the art market yesterday, and um, the raffle quilt was hanging there. And that's a consideration when you're hanging a quilt to take oh, pictures. Oh, yes. Wind is a big deal because that's a full, it's like a sail on a ship. <laughs> you can get that wind and just take off. It is not good. Yeah. So people are standing there holding the quilt, trying to make it not fly away. Yeah. So you may want to. hit the people behind them. When you're getting your fancy headshot taken, you may want to engage the services of a photographer as well to help. If that's not your forte of taking pictures, of course. And that can make the difference on whether your quilt makes it on the cover of a magazine versus oh, just an interior. Right. Yep. But we shipped the other quilt off. You, when I say we, it was her. We, there's three we's. You realize that, right? There's me, we, you, we, and we, we. And so that was the you, we. You've never heard that. I have heard it. I still find we, we disgusting. <laughs> so anyway, it's not. It was just a term. Right. It's like And now it's stressful. It's like y'all. All y'all. All y'all. That's plural. Y'all. Anyway. <laughs> And I do use y'all quite often. Uh, we digress. We digress. Shipping. Shipping. You shipped it. Use a trackable shipping service. Yes. Yes. With insurance. Yes. And protect it from elements because sometimes it rains Put on it boxes. Put it in a bag. Put it in a bag. Right. I hate putting it in a trash bag. I do too. Mine's at least white. That's good. Instead of black. And not a scented trash bag. Oh, no. Ugh. Oh, I can't stand those. <laughs> I think that's just bad. Anyway. <laughs> so, yes, put it in a bag, ship it off. Okay. Let them take pictures. And do not submit all your great ideas at one time. Space them out. <laughs> right. Because then you're going to end up having to make all the quilts at the same time. All the quilts. All the quilts. Now, what if you get rejected? You cry first. That's what I would do. I would cry first. Do you resubmit it to a different magazine? You could, yes. I don't see why. Would they provide feedback on why it's not a fit? No, usually no. not. It's just a form letter. It's usually like, thanks for playing. No. It's like the rejection letters from a quilt show. Sorry we didn't have room to hang your quilt. <laughs> it, there's no reason. <laughs> we didn't have... And I've gotten plenty, so yeah. I understand this. So... They, they yeah. don't tell so, you why. They just say, we can't do it. Try a different outlet. Try, you know, if it was rejected from a magazine, try working with a fabric company to see if they would like to use it for an upcoming line. Right. So. Yeah. Yep. Cry. And then just, you know, drink vodka, apparently. <laughs> That's what they would do. I don't drink vodka. You don't drink anything. I know. I know. You drink tea. I drink tea. So I would cry. <laughs> I mean, I would cry too. I don't drink that much vodka, guys. <laughs> it took me like three years to get through. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All righty. So, so 
Is that all we have today? I believe so. So if you have submitted patterns for publication, mm-hmm. what has been your experience? Let us know. <laughs> Leave a comment on the blog or here on our YouTube episode. And that's all we've got for this episode. Today's show is made possible by Ink and Arrow Fabrics because fabric should be fun. You can learn more about Ink and Arrow and their fun fabrics at inkandarrowfabrics.com. And we'd like to thank 77 Peaches Big Think Productions for helping produce The Stitch. You can find their links on our site, our show site, thestitchtvshow.com. If you're interested in sponsoring, please email us at info at thestitchtvshow.com. If you've enjoyed the show, please like it on YouTube. Share your thoughts on this episode's topics on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google Press, <laughs> Plus, and tag us with thestitchtvshow.com. The next virtual Stitch In is Friday, May 12th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast on our channel here on YouTube and our blog. My podcast, Hip to Be Square, is out Fridays at hiptobeasquarepodcast.com or on iTunes or Google Play. You can email us questions or comments at info at thestitchtvshow.com or buy our patterns at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends. <laughs>